And in the wake of that landmark Supreme Court decision ruling that the Muskogee Creek Nation is still an Indian reservation, there have been a lot of questions. Two Works View reporter Tony Russell took some of your questions and comments from our Facebook page and asked legal experts what this high court ruling means going forward. A huge case coming out of Washington, D.C., a treaty reaffirmed by the Supreme Court. So what does that mean for Native Americans and non-Natives living right here in the Tulsa area? So I asked a tribal sovereignty attorney. Her name is Mary Catherine Nagel, a Cherokee citizen. And I asked, you know, what was really decided by the Supreme Court this week? If Congress doesn't establish a reservation, it continues to exist. And that's all the Supreme Court concluded is that the reservation has never been disestablished. It still exists. Second, it's not a restoration of any lands because no lands are going to change ownership. It's the border, right, that we're saying this border is still here. It's like affirming that the border of the state of Kansas still exists. Yes, Kansas' the state border still exists. If I'm an individual landowner inside Kansas, it doesn't mean I no longer own my property. It just means it's been confirmed that I'm located inside the borders of Kansas. And for those non-native, they ask, you know, what happens to your land? Are you still allowed to be here? So this is a huge question that a lot of people have. The fact that the Creek Nation's reservation has never been established has no impact on individual land ownership. In fact, a lot of the reservations in the United States today are comprised of significant portions of non-Indian owned land. That's true in Montana, that's true in the state of Washington, that's true in South Dakota, it's true in Arizona, it's true here in Oklahoma. And what that means is it's it's just like being an, 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 a landowner in the state of Kansas or in the state of California, right? You're within a certain sovereign's borders, but you, yeah, you still own your land. Now, the next question folks have is, well, what can the tribe do to me? Of course, I think this is a problematic question because tribes are not out there to get non-Indians, right? Tribal governments, uh, just like any other sovereign government, has the interest of protecting the health, safety, and welfare of all the citizens within its borders. So what about the power of law enforcement to arrest people on a reservation? Here's the current law right now. The state police will still have the authority to detain Indians on the reservation. Now, ultimately, they may have to turn them over to the feds or to the tribal nation. But that doesn't stop them from detaining someone if they have reasonable, reasonable suspicion that a crime is being committed or if they see a crime being committed, right? Regardless of suspicion, if you just, if a law enforcement, Tulsa, you know, police officer sees a crime being committed by an Indian. He doesn't have to say, oh, I can't do anything. Again, thanks to Mary Catherine Nagel for coming on and speaking with us and coming up tonight at six. We'll speak to a criminal defense attorney about what these criminal cases in the wake of the decision will look like in Tulsa. Tony Russell, two works for you.